special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be talking about the uh, new rims and tires that I just recently got for the 4Runner. And uh, I wanna dive a little bit into just vehicle fitment and kind of some of the things that are thrown around when you're searching about tires. Uh, I know there's a lot of different tire sizes and rim sizes, and so I just wanted to maybe clarify a couple terms that might be confusing for some of you or you just want to have a little more clarity about. So we'll talk a little bit about those things. And then I'm going to kind of walk through why I chose the Relations race wheels that I did. So just to kick it off, uh, these are the 17 inch Relations race wheels uh, RRH-6. Uh, they're a hybrid beadlock tire. That basically means that they can either be mounted as a beadlock or just mounted as a normal tire rim on the bead. Um, you can either buy a beadlock ring from them or you can even buy these protection rings that help to keep the rim more protected when you're off-road. And uh, those can be added or removed. They basically go in the same place as the beadlock. So I thought that was a really awesome feature, which is one reason I was really excited about them. I also just love the way these rims look. And uh, a lot of rims are mainly just gonna be more about, uh, you know, what you like and uh, their quality rather than, you know, this particular rim is so much better than another for, uh, you know, certain reasons. I, there, there are quality differences, but a lot of it's just gonna be subjective based on what you kind of like and uh, the style that you're into. Um, but I really like the style of these. I like the dark bronze. So it's really hard to do these justice, but the color, Here's a picture, I'll throw it up on the screen. So these rims are like a dark matte bronze. They're really not very gold. They're not very orange. They're pretty much this like super dark bronze that goes really nice with black in my opinion, and I really like them. And uh, I feel like most pictures end up kind of skewing the color of them. So I took this picture with really, really white light outside. It was very overcast and I haven't color graded or anything to this image. So trying to give you kind of a clean look at what these rims will actually look like on black tires. I absolutely love the way these look and they're wrapped in 33 inch Yokohama Geolander 003s. They're a mud terrain tire that uh, I was really, really excited about that have siping still, so they should be pretty good in the snow. Um, but I heard that they were a very good quiet mud terrain tire and so that's what I chose. They're in the 285 70 17 sizing. So let's just talk a little bit more about the actual fitment and kind of picking the size. Uh, you know, what backspacing means, what spacers mean, what offset means, how the tire sizing works, all those sorts of things. Okay, so this was the best way that I felt I could kind of explain this quickly. So this, the type of tire sizing that I see the most for, especially 4Runner tires, is typically this 285-70 R17, 255-70 R17, 265-70 R17. A bunch of these numbers that are laid out exactly like this. So basically what these mean is the 285 is the width of the tire. So when you stand the rubber up, it's gonna be basically the width or the part that's going to be touching the road. That's the width of the tire in millimeters, which in this case is about 11.22 inches. And then the middle number is a percentage actually. So this is a percent of 285, which is the height of the rubber in between the rim. So if we look over here, it's this spacing right here. So you have your rim in the middle and then you have the rubber on the outside, it's this spacing. So in this case, 70% of the width would be 7.85 inches. And so if you look over here, we have about 7.9, 7.9 inches on top and bottom. This R stands for radial rubber. It has to do with like the layering of the rubber or the construction of the actual rubber. Um, I don't think that's probably too important for understanding sizing. And then the 17, which in this case means a 17 inch rim. So this is in millimeters, this is percentage, and then this is in inches. And so if we look over here for this particular size, which is this is the size of my rim, give or take sort of the knobbiness of the tire. I think depending upon what kind of tire you buy, some comes with thicker knobs. So that kind of will throw off the dimension ever so slightly. But at least in this case, the width of the tire would be 11.2 inches roughly. And then you're gonna have the 7.9 plus 17 plus 7.9, which gives you about 32.7 inches tall. So that's why a lot of people, when they say 285 70 R17s, 
are basically a 33 inch tire. Now another way that people will name tires is using this sort of naming convention where it's the height of the tire in inches including the rim. So this would be 33 inches tall total. And then you have 12.5 which is just the width of the rim kind of like this 285. 12.5 inches wide. So again, that's gonna be the width of the rubber part that's touching the road. R again stands for radial rubber composition. And then in this case, it would be 20 for a 20 inch rim. Setting that aside, now I kinda of wanna talk a little bit about offset and tires and just talking about fitment, okay? So if we just put a tire on this axle that I've made here, so this is my setup. You've got your tire. This is the front of the vehicle. This is the rear. I'll just add that for a frame of reference. Front, rear, okay? So a lot of people will have more fitment issues in the front than in the rear. And what I've found is with a zero offset tire and my 285 70R 17s and the three inch front lift, I've been able to fit these without doing a body mount chop. I did, however, remove my front mud flap and I also did a fender liner mod. So if you hear about people saying fender liner mod, what this basically means is they're either trimming this plastic or they're trimming some clips and things and pushing this forward. So what I did is I just cut this part of my bumper a little bit more aggressively and then I drilled new holes and pushed my clips and everything up a little bit. This is really easy to do and you just use a Dremel. So don't be too intimidated by this if this is something you need to do to fit your tires. I don't really think it's that difficult. Now a body mount chop, what it basically does is your frame mounts to your body in certain spots. And so this body mount is pretty large and there's kind of extra metal around the mounting location. Now some people will argue this is for additional safety or additional stability and so they don't recommend a body mount chop. You're gonna need to go with whatever you decide and do some of your own research. But what a body mount chop does is it cleans up maybe some of that extra metal around that body mount and puts a very aggressive new welded reinforcement around that body mount. And so you get a little bit more clearance when you're turning your tire past there, it won't rub as bad. So then the, the other things that people take into account is negative and positive offset. So I've drawn this right up here and basically what zero offset means is your middle of your rim where it mounts to the hubs is perfectly balanced on top of all of your lug nuts tightened down all the way. So from what I've noticed that basically means that there's a, a distance on the inside and the outside of where your lug nuts are going to tighten down to and if those are equal that's zero offset. Now there's other options too where you have a positive offset or a negative offset. And that's what I've made these little cutouts for. So a positive offset is gonna move this mounting location out and a negative offset is gonna pull this in. So a lot of people will typically go for a negative offset because they want their tire to poke outside the vehicle. They wanna be able to see some of that rubber outside the actual body. So the negative offset will pull this tire out. Now some people, maybe depending upon what kind of vehicle you have or if you're running larger tires, maybe you'll want a positive offset, which will pull the tire in. It's all just gonna depend on your application, but I don't know too many people that end up buying positive offset tires. I think that's, you know, maybe for some sort of fitment, but most people will either run zero offset or negative offset rims on Forerunners, at least that I've seen. So, to just give a little demonstration here, if you did a zero offset tire, that would probably line up perfectly with the side of your vehicle. And then if you did a positive offset tire, that's gonna pull your rim in a little bit. So now you see how this doesn't line up nearly as well. And then if you did a negative offset tire, that's gonna push out your rim and it's gonna stick out past your, your bumper there a little bit. So depending upon what kind of rim you decide to buy, you're going to have these different types of offset. Now, at least with these um, RRH6 wheels that I got, I believe the offset options were like zero, negative 12, and negative 38. So, you know, the zero would be right here, negative 12 would push it out a little more, negative 38 would push it out even more. Now, the thing to keep in mind is, is as you get 
more offset. When your tire turns, this outside portion of your tire is gonna start rubbing on things. Same within the front. Okay, the, the big thing you have to worry about is these little edges here on your tire. Because when your tire is just sitting inside your wheel well, there's a decent chance that it will fit fine. But the moment you decide to turn your tire, that edge is gonna bump into stuff. Same with that. So what you just have to make sure is, is if you're gonna get larger tires, then you may be able to fit a lot larger tire with zero offset than with a larger tire and negative 38 offset. Because if your tire size grows, then you know maybe this line will be out here and it will bump sooner because your tire is wider. Or, like I said, if you have more offset, you're gonna hit sooner when it's pivoting way out here rather than pivoting back inside of the wheel well where you maybe have pr plenty of clearance. So that's basically what negative and positive offset are. I just wanted to explain them because when you're trying to pick the size of rim and tires that you want, uh, you're gonna have to balance these types of things. So I chose to go with a zero offset rim and my 285-70 R17 tires. And all I did was, like I said, removed this uh, mud flap right here and then just kind of adjusted this plastic and I didn't have to do anything with my body mount chop. Now I've heard of similar people who run negative 38 offset rims on 285 70 R17s that when they're at full crank, they'll rub up here so they did a very aggressive plastic fender liner mod and they have a body mount chop and they've removed the mud flaps and they still occasionally will rub. So it just is going to depend on what sort of look you want and what sort of sizing you wanna do. Uh, but that's why I went with the zero offset because I felt I could maybe run taller tires in the future and I was more interested in clearance than uh, the stance of the vehicle but again it's personal preference and it's really going to be whatever you want to go for uh, whatever look you want or depending upon the performance you want uh, you know there's so many different options and it's your vehicle so you can choose what you'd like to do uh, but those are just considerations that you'll probably need to take when trying to pick the certain sizes that you want to run on your vehicle. So I hope that explanation was helpful. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about why I picked these rims, why I upgraded to these tires, and kind of just my general thoughts about rims and tires, and kind of how I went about picking my size, and you know, the diameter of the tire, that sort of thing. So first off, I guess these are 17 inch rims. The TRD Pro rims are also 17 inch rims. The reason that I decided to upgrade is these are 1.5 inches wider, and so, Typically speaking, if you're going to go up to a 285-70-17 tire like this one, uh, you're going to want to start to get a wider tire because as your sidewall gets taller, you want to have a wider tire for it to grab onto. And that's just, there's a number of reasons and uh, tire experts can talk to you more about that than me, but you get better traction. The uh, weight of your vehicle is then distributed over more rim there's just a bunch of benefits. So I knew that I wanted to get a wider rim. I'm not really sure why the TRD Pro rims come so thin. Everyone basically instantly wants to upgrade their tire size with the TRD Pro rims. So I'm not really sure why they make them so thin, um, but unfortunately uh, I had to get rid of those. I, I actually really like how they look, but um, <laughs> I'm even more pumped with how these ones look. So that was primarily why I decided to upgrade my rim. Now a lot of people run a 17 inch rim and this is just so that they can have more of this sidewall and it helps to, when you air down, have more tire available. It also is just a more comfortable ride, most people would say, but having more rubber is typically always better for off-road and so that's why people typically tend to stay away from really large rims is then your tires tend to be really small and that just will typically hinder you off-road and it also hurts your ride quality. So the 17 inch rim is kind of the perfect balance between the two, but I know a lot of Tacoma owners also will do 16 inch rims. So it just kind of depends on what your preferences are. The one thing I will mention is when I got these new rims, I had to upgrade to new lug nuts. Now I bought new locking lug nuts from Relations Race Wheels. Unfortunately, a couple of them were like misthreaded or something. So I've got a couple silver ones in there for now. They're sending me a couple new ones. So. No worries, but that is why there's some miscolored lug nuts in there. So just know that if you buy a new set of rims, make sure that you buy the proper lug nuts for those rims because the stock ones may not work 
after uh, you swap out your rims. So that's really why I picked these particular rims and I really like the way they turned out. Um, when you upgrade your rims, it's oftentimes a really convenient time to get new tires. And so I was getting sort of to the end of the life on my BF Goodrich KO2s and uh, I, I sort of liked them and I sort of didn't. Um, I had some balancing issues with them that caused a little bit of road noise. Um, it didn't really bother me and honestly they were still quieter than probably any mud terrain with that issue but um, they seem to have worn a little bit funny. I'm not quite sure. I never came to the bottom of it. I never did a road force balance like some guys do but Discount Tire was telling me that I didn't really even need to do a road force balance. That typically is all they do on like really thin racing tires for large rims. I'm not quite sure, but I think next time I go for an all-terrain tire, I'm going to get Falcon Wild Peaks. Um, just because I didn't have awesome luck with my BF Goodrich KO2s. Um, when I first got them, I bought them used, but they were perfect. Um, I didn't have any road noise. They rode amazing. And then for some reason, the uh, they started to wear a little different. So um, I'm not quite sure if that had to do with my alignment. Obviously, you know, tire stuff is so subjective. So take everything you read on the internet with a grain of salt, because some person may have a really bad experience with tires and maybe their car was out of alignment the whole time. So, you know, and, and then maybe they'll go get their car in alignment and they'll go get their tires rebalanced. But when all of the damage was done, it was out of alignment. And so, you know, the tires are permanently ruined. There's nothing you can do. So just kind of be careful with those sorts of things and try to just get you know a wide range of feedback from people and, and ask people you know who maybe have run the tires that can kind of tell you you know when I first bought them and they were new I actually really like them that you know this is what happened over the lifetime of having the tires so that was my experience with BF Goodrich KO2s before that I had Wrangler Duratrax and I like those but they, uh, they, they also wore weird and they were really loud tires. I didn't particularly like them. Uh, I know they wear really well, so they don't lose tread very quickly, but I still think somehow they wore weird. And uh, so they were really loud and they were also 265, 70, 17 tires. So I wanted to get away from those because I just thought they looked too small on my truck. Um, so now what I'm running is the uh, Yokohama Geolander 003s. Uh, these tires have been absolutely awesome. I'm, I'm in love. Uh, they look amazing, I think. Uh, they're mud terrains, but everyone I know, especially a lot of guys up in Canada, they run these all the time, and so I'm pretty confident they're gonna be great snow tires as well. They have siping, so I think that's gonna help them when, uh, when it comes winter time this year, but we'll, uh, well, I guess have to see. I'll put them to the test and I'll let all of you know probably do a six month review on these tires just so that I can keep everyone in the loop. But I really like how these look. I did a lot of research on mud terrain tires and even all terrain tires. I was looking at the uh, Baja Boss um, all terrain tires that just came out. Those look really awesome. Or I was gonna get the Falcon Wild Peak all terrains. But I started looking at these Yokohamas because this, this aggressive sidewall that they have and then also just how thick the tread is. I just thought it looked awesome. I wanted to have an aggressive tread on the truck and uh, so far they've actually been quite quiet. I, I don't think they're nearly as loud as probably most mud terrains are. Um, so I've really liked them. The noise doesn't really bother me. I know they are a little bit louder than the BF Goodrich KO2s, but I would say that they're definitely quieter than my, my Goodyear Duratrax that I had you know, before this. So. That's kind of why I chose these tires. I hope that sort of helps you. Um, I, I hope you liked my demonstration at the beginning of the video of just kind of choosing the right size tire and kind of the thought process I went through when I was picking the tire I wanted to run on the truck. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions about my tire experience or you just want me to weigh in on something, feel free to comment down below. I always typically respond to comments very quickly. So. Uh, with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.